Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to import palettes in GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.10 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course before we get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing, which is a bestseller on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So for today's tutorial, I'll be using a free photo that I downloaded from Pixabay, and of course I'll include a link to that in the description of the video. But palettes can be imported into GIMP via one of three ways. So you can either import a palette based on a gradient, based on an image you're working on within GIMP, or based on a palette file that you import from your computer. And so I'll show you how to do all three of those methods today. But for starters, you do need to know how to get to the palette doc or dialog. And you can do that by going over here to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and come over here to Palettes. So that will open up your palette dialog here, and you can see I already have a bunch of palettes in here. Most of these are going to be palettes that come with GIMP by default, but some of these are palettes that I created myself. And of course, you can edit any of these palettes by double-clicking on the palette, and that'll open up the palette editor here. So we've got our palette dialog and then the palette editor. These two things go hand-in-hand -hand with one another. So I'm going to come back over here to the palettes dialog. So let's start with our first method of importing a palette, and you can do this by right-clicking and coming over here to import palette. So from here you'll see the import a new palette dialog box and the first thing that pops up is select source. So you can see there are three different sources you could choose from. You've got the gradient source, the image, and the palette file. We're going to start with the gradient source here. So if I click this drop down, you can choose from any of the gradients that you have either active or saved within GIMP. So these are all the gradients that I've either saved or that have come with GIMP by default. So for example, I can click on the pastel rainbow gradient and you'll see that that is now going to generate my gradient over here in the palette preview box. And you can see that this is obviously a gradient, but it's been split up by color into each one of these boxes. So every time there's a color change, even if it's a slight color change, it's going to be added as a new palette color here. And if I come down here to import options, I could change the name of my palette. I can also change the number of colors in my palette. So by default, it's going to say 256. We can always increase or decrease this. So you can see here that I can increase this all the way up to 10,000. That's the max number of colors you can add into a single palette. Or I can decrease this to any value. So you can see here that it's sort of picking eight different colors here from the gradient. And the more I increase this, the more colors it's starting to add, the more shades you're going to get. You can also adjust the number of columns that are displayed here. Right now there's 16 columns. If I increase this, you'll see there's going to be more and more columns. And so that typically makes the squares for each of your palette colors smaller. I'm going to stick with the default of 16 here and also change the number of colors to 256. So now I'll click import. And right here now you'll see the pastel rainbow palette and it does have 256 colors. That's what this number is here inside of the parentheses here. So that was the first method. The second method involves importing a color palette based on an active image you have in GIMP. So this is going to work whenever you have your image file opened up as a composition within GIMP. So right now I only have the one image opened up, but if I had 10 images opened up, we could choose from any of those 10 images. So to do this, again, just come over here to your palettes dialog, right click, and go to import palette. And now under select source, we'll choose image. Right now we are using, again, the only image we have opened up in our composition here or within our image window. And you'll see you have a couple options here. So we have sample merged. That's going to grab the pixels from all the layers in your composition. So right now I only have a single layer. This is a single image. But if I had like five layers and each of them had different elements on them, then this option would allow you to pull pixels from each of those elements. So the colors displayed over here would be from all of the layers within your composition. And then you also have the selected pixels only option. So if you have a selection area drawn, it'll only pull the pixels into your palette from that selection area. I'm going to deselect that selected pixels only option though. So you can see over here in our palette preview box that there's not that many colors. And the reason for that is there's way more than 256 colors in a JPEG image or an RGB image. And the way I can fix this is I can either turn up my number of colors so that there's more than 256. 
So you can see I can just keep going until we get to 10,000 here. And actually images will tend to have more than 10,000 colors. So even cranking this up all the way isn't going to fully cover all of the colors that are gonna be available in your image. And if I turn the columns up here, you can see I can display more and more of the colors in my color palette until we have all of the colors pretty much displayed here. But another option here, if you don't wanna have every single shade of every single color inside of your color palette, you can actually use the bottom slider here called the interval slider. And what this is going to do is it's going to average together similar colors. So it's gonna give you a more accurate palette. And I just mean that in a sense that it's gonna pull uh, more of the various colors in your image without pulling a bunch of shades of the same color. So I'm gonna come back over here and I'm just gonna change this back to 256 and I'm gonna change the columns back to 16. And now we're gonna play around with the interval slider. So right now we have a bunch of shades of the same color, but when I turn the interval slider up, you'll see that those colors will get averaged. And let me actually just use the arrows right here. So you'll see that these colors are getting averaged and more colors are starting to creep in from the bottom here. And the higher I set this number, the less of the same shades appear here. So we're starting to get more and more various colors in here. So let's stop at 20 here. So you can see the colors are a lot more varied. We have a lot more options here now. And so this might be a better option depending on what you're going for when it comes to a color palette. But actually I'm gonna hit cancel. What I recommend doing is converting your image to a GIF. And the reason for that is that a GIF is going to automatically only allow 256 colors in total in your image. So this makes it a little bit easier to pull proper colors from your image into your palette. So let's go ahead and convert this. The first thing to note is you need to change the precision of the image to 8-bit. So we're gonna do that by coming over here to image, precision, and we'll change this to 8-bit integer. And I do recommend going with perceptual gamma here. So I'll hit convert. All right, so now our image is converted and you can tell by looking at the top here, now it says 8-bit gamma up here. So now that we've done that, we need to export this as a GIF file. So to do that, we'll go to file, export as, and I'm just gonna name this palette image GIF version. And I'm gonna navigate here to the folder where I wanna save this. And I'm gonna change the file type from a JPEG to a GIF and hit the enter key and I'm just gonna hit export. If you get an error message at this part, it means you didn't convert the image over, you didn't convert the precision to 8-bit, so make sure you do that, and it will only work with 8-bit, it won't work with uh, 16 or 32-bit. All right, so now our image has been exported. Let's go ahead and open that up. We'll go to File, Open Recent, and it should be right here since we just saved it. So open that up. And you can see our image doesn't look as good here, but it has reduced the colors to 256 colors. So now when we come over here to our palette dialog here and right click and go to import palette and then come over here to image. First of all, when I click the drop down, we'll now have two options here. So we wanna go with the one that's already selected because that is our active image, which is going to be the GIF file. And you'll see that the number of colors option has now been grayed out because this has exactly 256 colors. And then the columns you can adjust if you want this displayed differently. And the interval is also grayed out here. And of course I can come over here and change the name of my palette. So let's name this palette image GIF. And I'll click import. And here is our palette right here. So it's a much more simplified palette and it's going to cover all 256 colors from our GIF image. And if you're looking at this and you're wondering, well, how can I tell what color is which? You know, they're all sort of randomly distributed here and that is a downside of going with this GIF option. But one thing you can do is come over here to your eyedropper tool and just click on any pixel here and it will display over here in the palette section. So in your palette editor, if I hold control and zoom in and let's say I wanna use this specific color from her eye, when I click on this with the eyedropper tool, you'll see that that color will now show up over here in your palette editor. And I'll test one more color here. So I'll click on this blue and you can see now that blue has been selected. So hold control and zoom out with my mouse wheel. Of course, once you have the palette editor open, you can always edit your palette. So you can come over here and change the name of your palette or come down here and change the name of each individual palette color. Or if you click this option here, it will delete that entry or it will delete that palette color. And you can zoom in or out using these icons right here. Or you can click the zoom all and that will go ahead and reposition your palette so that it fits in your window.
So the last method for importing a palette is to import a palette file. And I will admit that this method is a little bit inconsistent at the moment, at least in this version of GIMP. So if I come over here to the palettes dialog again, and then I right click on a random area and go to import palette, I can come down here and choose palette file. GIMP by default uses a GPL file as its palette files, but it'll also import a .pal file, which is often used in things like Microsoft products. And let me actually hit cancel here. I'm gonna show you guys where the palettes are located within GIMP. So I can come over here to edit, preferences, and scroll down here to folders, and then come down here to palettes. So if I click on this location here, this file location, it'll populate up here so I can highlight and control C to copy that. And then if I open up my file manager here and I click on the file address search bar up top here, I can just control V to paste that in, hit the enter key and that'll take me right to my folder. So you can see here that the file type in here is all GPL files. So if you guys have a GPL file, which honestly those are sort of hard to come by, at least in my research, you can always click and drag that GPL file right here into your palettes folder and come back over here to GIMP and let me just hit cancel. And you can hit this refresh button and that will refresh your palettes and your new palette should display here in the palettes folder. But if you don't have a GPL file, you can always import a different file type. I found that .txt files tend to work and I have an entire how-to article on how to set this up, so I recommend reading that. But once you followed the steps in that how-to article and created your own palette, to import that into GIMP, all you have to do is right click, go to import palette, come over here to palette file, Click right here where it says none and you're going to navigate over to the folder where your palette file is located and then come over here. In this case, I'm going to open up the palette file I created in that how-to article. So just double click on that and you can see a preview of your palettes over here in the preview box. And again, you can rename this to whatever you want and I'll hit import and there is our palette right there. Just know that when you are creating your own palette files, it can be a little bit inconsistent. So make sure you're paying attention to the details when you're creating your palette file and just be a little bit patient with the process as you are working on it. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing, which is a bestseller on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.